Hi everyone, if you're running Linux and want to also run Windows, but want to avoid deleting your Linux, then I will show you how you can safely install Windows in a dual boot setup with Linux. I'm running Ubuntu here, and it should work with other distributions based off of Ubuntu, such as Linux Mint. And if you're using a distro not based on Ubuntu, then you'll still have an idea of how to get it to work, which is most important. So for this video, a minimum USB drive of at least 16 gigabytes is needed for two ISOs. The Windows 11 ISO installation media is 5.6 gigabytes. And as I'm running Ubuntu, I'll be using the Ubuntu Linux Live CD, which is six gigabytes. So in total, that's about 12 gigabytes. You generally should be able to use any Live CD as long as you have access to the applications Gparted and OS Prober. As I will have two ISOs, I am going to be using Ventoy. Ventoy is a tool to create a bootable USB drive for your images, such as the ISOs I'm going to be downloading, which will make it more convenient for booting. So first I'm going to download Windows 11. I'm just going to Google and search for Windows 11 download. And I'm going to download Windows 11 here. Let's scroll down. And it says here, download Windows 11, disk image, ISO for X64 devices. And I'll select it, download now. It's asking for the language, confirm, and download. Next, I'm going to download Ubuntu. I'm going to go to ubuntu.com and go to products, Ubuntu desktop, download Ubuntu desktop, and I'm going to download the latest version. And lastly, I'm going to download Ventoy. Go to ventoy.net and then go to download and then download for Linux. And once all are downloaded, go to your downloads folder. And I'm going to extract Ventoy. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to run Ventoy GUI.x8664 file. I'm going to put in my password. And plug in your USB drive and refresh. And my drive comes up 256 gigabytes and go to option and sure secure boot support and partition style to GPT and hit install. Okay. Okay. All right. It's completed. Okay. Close. And on the left side, we see the two partitions created on the USB drive, Ventoy and Vtoy EFI. So Ventoy is we're going to put the images on. And I'm going to copy Ubuntu and the Windows ISOs onto it. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. Ensure you have Secure Boot disabled in your BIOS. Next, ensure you have your USB drive to be booted first. And then afterwards, save changes and reset. It's booted into Ventoy and I have Ubuntu and Windows 11. And I'm going to boot into the Ubuntu Live CD so I can resize my partitions to make space for Windows 11. Try or install Ubuntu. All right, it's booted into Ubuntu Live CD. And I'm just going to close the welcome screen and going to open up Gparted. Authenticate. And SDA1 is my EFI partition for Ubuntu. SDA2 is my slash partition for Ubuntu. So I'm going to free up some space on slash here to make room. And a minimum of 52 gigabytes is needed. And so I'm going to do about 60 gigabytes. Resize. And then apply. It's completed, close. And now I'm going to remove the boot flag from the EFI partition for Ubuntu. Manage flags. Close. And we see it's been removed. And now add it back after Windows has been installed. During the Windows install, if it sees an existing EFI partition, it will use it, which would mean it would share it with Ubuntu. Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in the EFI partition. So it would remove Ubuntu 
for example, after a Windows update. And if this happens, that would make you unable to boot into Ubuntu. So the boot flag has been removed for now so that Windows will create a separate EFI partition for itself. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go back into Ventoy and load the Windows 11 ISO. Next. Next. Previous version of the setup. Next. Install now. I don't have a product key. I'll add it later. Windows 11 Pro. Accept. Next. Custom. All right, it's asking where to install Windows and select your unallocated space. So this is the 60 gigabytes that I made available in Gparted. And before installing, I'm gonna be removing my ethernet cable as I'm gonna be using a local account instead of using a Microsoft account and hit next. Restart now. Now, if it doesn't boot back into Windows, go into your BIOS, check your boot order. So in my boot order here, Ubuntu is still selected first, and then next is the Windows Boot Manager that was just installed. And so I will have to change the order so that the Windows Boot Manager is first, and then save changes and exit in your BIOS. All right, now for the second step to set up the local account, I'm going to hit Shift plus F10 to go and open up a command prompt and then type in OOBE backslash bypass NRO. And it will reboot. All right, and now I'm going to go through these screens. Yes, yes, skip. And I'm going to select, I don't have internet, name the device, next, put in your password, security questions, and I'm going to uncheck for maximum privacy. All right, it has installed Windows. So I can plug back in my ethernet connection, and now I'm going to reboot and go back into Ventoy. Load up the Ubuntu Live CD, boot in normal mode, close the welcome screen, open up Gparted, all right, and I'm going to restore the boot flag on SDA1, close. Close Gparted, open up a terminal, sudo in. I'm going to type in fdisk-l to list my partitions. Scroll up. And here's my disk dev SDA. And so these two partitions, SDA1 and SDA2, they are for Ubuntu Linux. And so I'll need to mount them. And I'm going to mount them to the mount directory. So first I'll mount dev sda2. And now I'm going to mount sda1, the EFI partition for Ubuntu. Next I'm going to mount the directories dev, dev pts, proc, sys, and run. So this will mount all of these under slash mount. And now I'm going to true root into the mount directory. Next, I'm going to have the EFI variables available. So I'm going to mount them. Made a typo, it should be firmware. Now I'm going to edit the Etsy default grub file using nano. And scroll down to where it says grub disable OS prober. And remove the hash or the pound sign. Hit control X to exit. Save modified buffer, yes. 
and file name to write, enter. And now run OS Prober. And we see here it's found dev SDA3, which is the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. And following it is a grub probe error. Cannot find a grub drive for dev SDB2. That's just my USB drive, so that is fine. Can ignore it. And now I'm going to make a new grub configuration file, which will have Ubuntu and Windows. All right, so it's found the Linux image, so that's good. And it's found the Windows Boot Manager as well, so that's also good. And so that grub probe error comes up again, that's because it is the USB drive, so that can be ignored. Now I'm going to exit out the true root, and now I'm going to reboot my computer and go back into the BIOS to confirm the boot order after these changes have been made. All right, in my hard disk here, it's set to boot the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to change that so it will boot Ubuntu. And I'm going to remove my USB drive. I no longer need it. And then save changes and exit. All right, it's booted into Grub as expected. And we have Ubuntu and we have the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to confirm I can boot into Ubuntu. All right, Ubuntu works. And now I'm going to reboot and try Windows. All right, Windows works as well. And that's it. That's how you can safely install Windows in the Duo Boot setup with Linux. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.